Hello, good evening. My name is Bimbo and welcome to our channel once again. Uh, for, those, for those of you that are just seeing this channel for the first time, this is uh, Jackma with their days. What we discuss on this channel is bringing you opportunity, particularly to students who want to Jackma to Portugal, where we reside, to Austria and other beautiful European countries where we believe that uh, you are going to have a beautiful relocation experience, an experience that will not make you to break the bank, that will not make you to, you know, to have to borrow all your, I mean, to have to borrow from different people, especially, you know, relocation experience that you cannot really afford. So we try to make sure that we bring you scholarship opportunities, you know, relocation opportunities that are very, very cheap and affordable. So, and uh, today I have, um, uh, I have a guest in the house that uh, I want to, you know, I want to quickly, you know, interview. And the guest is actually a student in uh, one of the school in Austria. And then for those of you that have been following this channel, you will discover that uh, I did a video where I made mention of um, Austria being one of the cheapest European uh, um, universities where, I mean, Austria having uh, the cheapest universities that you can, you know, uh, study practically almost for free. The reason I said that is because uh, there are school fees, regardless of the program, you know, regardless of, regardless of the courses, MSc, BSc, and PhD program, the tuition fee for all international applicants is, is the same thing, which is around 720 to 750 euros per semester. So, which means in a year, you are likely going to be paying about 1,000 400 to 1,500 tuition fee per, uh, per session. So I did a video extensively about different universities that you can apply for and you know numerous courses that are taught in English. So if you are if you have not seen that video, you can you know you can try to look for them on the list of the video on my channel. So and recently some people have been asking that uh, they want to jack bar to uh, uh, Europe, particularly Austria, and they are they are afraid about the admission process, particularly the proof of funds, how they will be able to show uh, proof of funds, among other things. And, you know, the standard of living in Austria, are there jobs in Austria, among other questions that are of great concern to people that are considering Austria as a, reloc as a relocation destination. So that is why I felt that uh, it would be uh, it would be of great help to reach out to my brother in Austria, who is currently a student, to, I mean, share some light and experience of how he was able to apply for admission, get admission, and move to Austria. I mean, if he can do it, every other person can do it. So, and I'm sure that uh, with his uh, experience that we'll be sharing today, you will be able to, you know, um, I mean, map out your plans or if your plan is already on motion you'll be able to strategize effectively i mean at some point even with his help you'll be able to strategize effectively so uh without you know you know uh without further ado let's um uh can, can we meet you can you introduce yourself to to the to the house please okay um good evening uh my name is uh daniel daniel Yubadi. um i'm a student of GKU, Johannes Kepler University in Linz, in Austria. Uh, I'm studying uh, artificial intelligence. Wow. I'm in my second semester. Yeah, so that's like, uh, I'm, I'm doing my summer currently. So, um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> artificial intelligence, man, that is a great deal now in Europe, <laughs> man. <laughs> At the MV, you already. <laughs> We will we, we do management, management, man. Uh, artificial intelligence, data analysis, cybersecurity, and the likes. That is now yeah. a big now in Europe. Wow, that is that is a good one. Um, I mean, uh, what made you decide on um uh, on Austria? I mean, what 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 influenced your decision about Austria? And um, why Austria? I mean, is it is it that it is the only country that uh, uh, you you wanted to go to, or it was just because they gave you admission? What influenced your decision, particularly in Austria? Okay. I mean, um, yeah, with Austria, I think um, they had um, well, apart from them having a good cultural society, hmm. um, Austria is still one of the uh, beautiful places in Europe. Mm. I would say that, yeah. 
with confidence, like yeah, the cultural values are there, the, the people are nice. Mm. Even though you check online, you see some statistics and stuff like that, fine. But with the experience I gathered online and people I messaged them, I noticed they were nice people. Um, the cost of living was way, 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 way low than what they are given. Like you see beautiful places, beautiful houses, and you hear the prices sometimes, you'll be like, come on, this is too good to be true. Wow. Uh, um, the uh, the mode of living is, is nice, it's top-notch. Transportation is not a big deal. And also, it's kind of uh, a connection to most of the neighboring cities around. So I feel... As a young guy that was that was still growing, I feel I needed a place to act, to be my base, so I could grow, and also in, and also experience life, uh, as a whole and all that. So I feel Austria was like topping the list for me, and also, in terms of the school, I think JKU is one of the top top schools, here in Europe. Yeah, in terms of um, the values, the the teaching abilities and all that, the infrastructure, if you check the building also, I think JKU building is very, very, very beautiful and all that. So, and the school fees also yeah. for artificial yeah. intelligence, yeah. something. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think it's, I think that those were the things that really, really influenced my life and all that. So, yeah, I was making my decision. And also, I think I checked the other schools, but I think I just got interested with Austria because of the beauty. Yeah, let me put it that way. Yeah. Wow, wow, that's that's very nice. I mean, it's it's also part of the same thing that uh, I researched uh, about Portugal as well when I was you know trying to relocate. I, I spoke with a lot of people and some international students. You know, all the information they gave to me about Portugal, I said, wow, this is where I want to go to. So. That is why it is very important that you do your research about the country that you are going to. What is, I mean, you, you have to have some sort of what is called like a KPI a checklist such that, okay, you, you confirm this online, you confirm this, you speak with different people, try to gather enough information about the country that you are going to. So, so that by the time you get there, you don't get surprised. That is really, really <clears throat> Uh, that is really very, very, very important. So now um, we all know that uh, for all international applicants, they charge 720 euro. I mean, just to, for you to confirm, how much is your school fees? Just to confirm. Yeah, my school fees is 749 per semester. So let's just say 750. 750. Yeah, so most, uh, I mean, I've, I saw in some school, they say either 720, between 720 to 750. So yeah, it's, it's, I just wanted to confirm that so it doesn't look like I am providing. If it, <laughs> this is somebody that is there, so you know, so seven forty nine. And uh, uh, are you a BSc student, MSc student, or PhD student there? I'm a BSc student. Oh, BSc student. Wow, that is great. Would Would you like to? Can you tell us about your um, admission process? You know, you know the documentation process, ad admission process. Even I mean, let's say before and after applying for the admission. Can you tell us how the whole process went? Um, I started by knowing the kind of course I wanted to go for uh, because I want to Japan now. I can't just pick any average course mm -hmm. because at least three years is still going to be part of my life and I will need it to be probably beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. So I picked out the course and artificial intelligence was on my top list. Mm -hmm. Then I checked the requirements needed for uh, admission, I saw, I saw that, oh, okay, fine, I, I'm good for this. Then you then you start the process of um, going to legalize your documents in Nigeria, mm. your uh, your WAEC or your NECO, your tr um, transcripts, I use my transcripts, um, my uh, school certificates, school degree certificates, um, I did uh, the date of birth, mm. legalizing all those. I did all those on the Ministry of Education. Mm. So once I was done with Ministry of, Ministry of Education, I went to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I legalized it there. Mm -hmm. So once you're done with that stage, you take the documents to the embassy. But before you go to the embassy, you have to book an appointment on the Austrian portal. Mm. Once you open your portal, you see, I think, four options there. 
you see uh, authentication and legalization, you see resident permits, and what is something, resident permits, the third one I think is visa. Yeah, I think you see visa, whatever. so and the, I think there's a fourth one also. So you select the um, uh, authorized the legalization and uh, authentication, you pick a date. So once they confirm your date, you input your details, your passport number, and other details you've been asked. So once they've confirmed your details, you'll be given a date to the um, embassy. So to make it easier for you, because I did my Ministry of Education authorization and everything in Abuja. So you probably go a week or like two or three days before your embassy appointment. Uh, Ministry of Education, because of the stress, I think people are, you meet a lot of people there are trying to get their documents right and all that. You're going to spend at least a day or maximum of two days. Mm -hmm. So the next day, Ministry of Foreign Affairs closes by 12, which means you have to get there before 12 to be able to collect your documents. So I will advise, like I was telling someone recently, I will advise you to go early in the morning, submit your documents so you go to collect by two. Mm -hmm. So you just know that, okay, for that day, you're not going to the embassy because embassy also closes by two. Wow. Yeah, so the next day you take your documents to the embassy and you submit your documents. As at then, legalization money at embassy was um, 200K. Well, I think now it's 400 euro yeah. in cash. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, like for for singles, yeah. For families, five hundred, yeah. Wow. So um, you after you done that, you wait for three months. Yeah, minimum of three months. Yes. Three months, yeah. So they will check all your documents. Go to your school. Go to your house. Check if your your family name is truly correct. Check your state of origin. Mm -hmm. You go to your town. Wow. Confirm every details. They are very strict with their checking. So the problem is most people miss it out at that point. You understand? Like some documents you submit might not really be correlated. Probably your age or your date of birth is not the same as the age on your on your transcripts. So that one alone has given you a red flag. Red flag, yeah. But they will know something is wrong somewhere. And for those that probably I think all of us didn't collect birth certificates immediately we were born. I think we collected it maybe years later or so. Uh, so you have to go for um, declaration of age at the courts. Mm -hmm. And the tricky one, again, at the declaration of age, I will tell people is, there's a way you bypass it, but don't do it. Mm -hmm. Don't ever bypass it. They will know. Mm -hmm. The best thing for you to do is just go to the judge and do a proper verification of age by you or your parents or your guardian, anyone, and you sign. So with your passport, you sign. Your guardian also will sign. So that's like the legit way of doing it instead of just going through the corner corner because they will find out okay, so once you've done so mm -hmm. once you've done that i think yeah then you now you can now start applying for schools because mm -hmm. most schools in austria require your authenticated documents mm -hmm. so by uh, by authentication now do you mean um taking it to Ministry of Education first or Ministry of Foreign Affairs first before applying, or we have to, they have to legalize the document at yeah. embassy. Yeah, they have to legalize the at embassy first. Oh, okay, before applying for so, Exactly, so it means some schools though, not all the schools. Not all the schools, yeah, because at least yeah. the schools that I applied to, I didn't have to legalize at yeah, embassy. Some schools, yeah, some schools, yeah. And some schools also, we ask you to send your documents to Austria. It varies. So we'll probably send it through Korea service. Yeah, the we have to check it. Like the real original, not snapped, not photocopy, not scanned. The wow. original document, you have to send it through a Korea service for them mm -hmm. to check. Mm -hmm. So once you pass that stage, you pick your course, they're giving you, you pass that stage, they'll probably give you an admission. If you are not paying any acceptance fee, I think I already know of a school here in Austria that you pay. I think you pay 200 euro for them to process your admission. And once they give you that admission, your 200 euro will be removed from your school fees. Yeah. 
So, but if you're not giving that admission, the 200 euro will be returned back to you. That's fair. That's fair. So it's, it's like a win-win situation. You understand? So still, there's nothing big about it. Yeah. And so once you've yeah, I think that's all for the process of um, legalization and getting um, admission. Yeah. And all. Just, just to summarize what you said, so not all school in uh, Austria require that you legalize your document at the embassy. Yeah. Once you have yeah. Ministry of Education or Ministry of Foreign Affairs stamp on your document, you are good to go to apply for Exactly. It. You just have to do your own work to be able to find exactly. out the requirements of the school and the course that exactly. you are applying for. So and another thing again is that uh, I mean, he is going for um, BSc. Can you comment on this? The birth certificate, is it that uh, uh, it's very important as part of the um, legalization procedure for Austria, birth certificate is very important regardless of PhD, M Masters or BSc? They are very relevant. I think the only place they need it actually, that uh, the embassy really needs it, is um, your calculation of POF. If you are across a certain age, there's a particular amount of money you pay. Mm. You understand? If you are below that certain age, there's a particular amount of money you pay. Wow. So it's, I don't know about now, but at then it was 2,000 euro calculation on top of your money. But I don't know if it has really changed. Mm. I don't know. So that's why I keep saying best certificate is important. They won't really, really. If you're not with that document, they won't really, really answer you at the embassy. Or if they see any error on the document, you'll be screened out. Mm -hmm. So your base certificate is better for you to go and get declaration of each because they will tell you they need that base certificate to be issued immediately you were born, which most of us don't have. Yeah. So it's yeah. better for you to go for declaration of each at the courts. The judge signs your guardian and your parents signs, and that would be much more, more, more better. We take a lot of things for granted in Africa and Nigeria, especially. So when they give birth, you are supposed to be issued birth certificate, but uh, that is not the case. So birth certificate is very important, regardless of the program that you are going for. Make sure you have it legalized, sorry, verified at Ministry of Education or Ministry of Foreign Affairs before taking it to the embassy. It's part of the, I mean, required document. Actually, okay, the, I think the best certificate is just, just for foreign affairs. Yeah, the declaration is for foreign affairs. Foreign affairs, okay. So that okay. must be on it before the embassy can accept it. Mm -hmm, exactly. And if you're if you're going for BSA, especially if the age on your WAHEC or NECO or GCE is different exactly. from what is in your birth certificate, go and do declaration of age to make sure that it tallies. It is very, very it is very, very important. And um, I think the process at the Ministry of Education and Foreign Affairs is a little change now, especially, I mean, for BSc, it's still very simple. All they just do is to very to buy trash card, to do one or two things. Within a day or two, you can you know, be done. But for others, I mean, the procedure is such that they will send an email to your school to confirm your certification. But I think I've said on, a pre, on, on another video that uh, there's a you know, there's a short plug that we now use at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to, you know, to fast track some of this, um, some of this process of verification of uh, documents. Well, thank you very much for that. So, and um, like he has rightly said, now, um, so were you when you apply for admission, did you pay any application fee? No, I didn't. Uh, and then uh, by the time you are doing your enrollment, did your school ask you to pay any tuition fee from Nigeria? No, I didn't pay any. I got to Austria before I paid any money. Which is which is which is which is the norm. They don't the most of the school there, I mean, in my experience applying to them, they don't charge application fee, they don't charge tuition fee from Nigeria. It is until you get there before they start um, asking you to uh, pay tuition fee. Well, that is um, now, can you tell us about jobs in Austria? Have you started applying for jobs? Have you, you know, or if you are not applying for jobs, do, I mean, in terms of jobs generally, like how many months will it take for somebody to get job opportunities? Can you, you know, share okay. light? Um, in terms of job opportunities, there are jobs in Austria, but and I won't lie to you, I won't sugarcoat it. It takes a while. Um, because once you get to Austria, you need to sort your house contracts 
<laughs> which that is your we call, we call it medicital. Mm -hmm. So you need to sort that. You need to sort your medicital. You need to sort your e card. That's your insurance card. Mm -hmm. You need to sort your uh your your school fees mm -hmm. first to be able to collect uh, confirmation of studies. So once you've sorted all those documents, all those uh, stuff, uh, you've collected, accumulated all the documents, then you need to go and collect your uh, resident permit card. And because it's Austria, everything is based on, most of the things are based on appointments. You understand? Like, okay, uh, the magistrate closes by 12, you might not be able to get it done immediately. The health insurance closes early also, you might not be able to get it done immediately. So I will always advise people not to put pressure on themselves or strain themselves. So I, because the first month when you get there is for settling down and doing the normal, the, the registration and everything and all that. So once you've get, gotten your resident permit card, fine, you're good to go. Now you start looking for a job, you won't just end, get a place now and they will, okay, we are looking for you. Come and join us. No. So before you get a job in Austria, let's say it take another one month. So let's say you get to Austria January. You're going to get a job by March. You March three months. You get it before March. Yeah, you might get it before March. You might get it January. You might get it February. It's possible. You understand? Because you might have a friend that probably knows a place that there's an there's an open space. Mm -hmm. Then probably you you tell they tell them that this person then you complete your documentation quick, then they accept you quick. Mm -hmm. But even at that, there's what we call uh you they still have to register you to file you at the magistrate as a uh, IMS is IMS now I think yeah, it does the the in, I think it's about the tax and all that. Mm -hmm. So they still have to file your name and all those stuff, and it take at least a week or so. So now in terms of getting job, I always tell people to prepare two months after settling down to get a job. So basically, on an average, that means that uh, between one to three months, you can be lucky. I mean, the same procedure cannot apply to everybody. So between one to three months, you can plan that uh, uh, you do your registration, you get an apartment, you get your residence permit card and every other thing. So max, within two to three months or one to three months, you can always expect that uh, you get a job. But that is also dependent on if you have all the required documentation to be able to submit okay. to employer that you are looking for jobs. So because okay. employer in Europe, there's some you know, criteria that they ask, okay, do you have to do so and so, which show legally that you can work. So mm -hmm. max, within one to three months, you can um, always expect to look for job. Now, um, can you tell us about the visa and the residence application process that you went through? Okay. Um, the the visa and a residence permits process. I think you apply for resident permits in Nigeria, mm -hmm. so but you get the card in Austria. So the process is about once you've gotten an admission and they've verified your documents but after that three months. Then you go to the portal again to apply for resident permit appointment. Mm -hmm. So once you've applied for resident permit appointment, that is when you probably have to submit your admission letter, your um uh your legalized document. The ones you've done, I think you just have to submit uh the admission letter, the your transcripts, your certificate, uh your police character form. Mm -hmm. Because you need to do that, your mm -hmm. police character form, and I think it's just and your yeah your birth certificate, right? I think it's just four documents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once you submitted that, that's what we actually be taking to, uh, like to be taken to Austria. So um, I think you have to pay. As that that as that as that then I paid per document. That's when you pay per document. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then I paid 60, I paid 40k per document. But then my police character form, I was supposed to, because I didn't take it earlier, I did it when I was going for the resident permit. So I was supposed to legalize it at the foreign affairs. I think there was a public holiday or so, I was not able to do it. Then I took the remaining documents to the embassy and I was asked to bring the document on Monday. 
I paid 40k for the first document. So for the remaining document on Monday, I'm getting the, the rate that changed. I had to pay 60k for that document. But currently now, with what I checked today, they are paying 120 per document. Wow. So 120,000 naira per document now as this rate. With the rate might increase later, I don't know. But currently, this month, um, yeah, they, I think they shared 120 per document. And then I submitted uh, four documents in total. Yeah. My uh, certificate, my admission. Yeah. And also your house contract. Mm. Before you go for a resident permit, you need to get a contract in Austria. Mm. So it means you have to apply for houses online. So as a student, there are a lot of opportunities for you to get accommodation because there's a particular site for students' housing. So a lot of dorms are there. So you can pick anyone you want to and apply. Mm -hmm. So you just pay probably a little deposit. Mm -hmm. You receive their contract. Mm -hmm. Or better still, you look for apartments here to collect the contract and apply. Mm -hmm. I see. So, well, me personally, I would advise you to go for student dorm mm. for your contract because once you submit all those documents for for your resident permits, everything will be brought to the city you are coming to. Let's take for an example, you have, you, the school you are applying to is in Linz. So it means that it's a magistrate in Linz that will confirm all the documents you submitted. Mm -hmm. They will go to school to check if the admission is correct. They will go uh, to the house that you submitted the contract to check if it was correct. And also, they will check your... Uh, uh, what was now? They will check your police character form. Mm -hmm. if See if you have any history of uh, bad behaviors or you had any history of arrest, stuff like that, because they are very, 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 very strict. Yeah, they are, I won't lie to you, they are very, 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 very strict. Mm -hmm. So they will check all that. And if they see that, oh, you certified all the necessary documents, mm -hmm. yeah, they are good to go. And also, your proof of funds, yeah, I remember now, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, okay. that, that's the last point that we will talk about. So now, that student dorm, do you have some link that you can share for some, some people that, you know, that are interested in, you know? Anyone interested in, in Austria that wants to get it, just type OEAD. Don't worry, you will send it to me. I will add it to the video description. So just check the video description. I am going to add the student dome that uh, uh, I talked about so that uh, we don't waste uh, our guest's time. Now, um, which brings us to, I think, the last question here in terms of the proof of funds. A lot of people are scared about the proof of funds and all of those things. Can you, you know, can you spend like about two minutes to address it? To talk about okay, the proof of funds, how they can show proof of funds. I think uh, the, the trick about proof of funds is the, your rent. Yeah. Please in mind, your rent is going to determine how much your proof of funds is. Mm. So now, take for an example, you you renting an apartment of uh three hundred per month, which why that which was the reason I advised the student dorm. So if you are renting an apartment of uh three hundred per month, that will be three hundred multiplied by twelve. Well, that's twelve mm. months a year. Mm. 300 multiplied by 12 plus your school fees in a year that's one five mm -hmm. plus 2000 if you are more than 26 years old yeah i think i don't know if they've changed it so the total addition of that is your approval of funds mm -hmm. so now where it gets tricky now is everything you've all the calculations you've done is in euro so now mm -hmm. where it gets tricky is converting it to naira yeah so now you have to check embassy's rates. They don't make use of uh, black market rates. So mm -hmm. Make use of their own rates. So currently today, I think embassy rate is one five ten. Mm -hmm. so if your um, house rent is three hundred, let's say that will be three hundred multiplied by twelve, mm -hmm. which should give you three six plus mm -hmm. one five. Mm -hmm. Is your school fees mm. 
2000. Hmm. Wow. So your proof, your proof of funds multiplied by the rates. Hmm. Your proof of funds now currently now will be going to 10 million plus, 11 million plus. Wow. Hmm. But the trick with it is um number one you have to be able to prove that, oh, this is where I got this money from. Maybe from your dad, from your guardian, from your sponsor, mm -hmm. from uh, anybody you want to get it from. Mm -hmm. Another trick again is they don't really, really, really check if you don't tell them anything. Mm -hmm. So now people put themselves in trouble. You're saying your dad is so 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 as his occupation, and you're telling him it's your dad that gave you so 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 amount of money. Now they will get curious and ask you, how is your dad able to raise this kind of money? Mm -hmm. Now, as when the issue of you have to prove what it sold to be able to raise this kind of money. Mm -hmm. So as I say, people shoot themselves on the leg. So, so the if best they don't thing, ask you, if they don't ask you, don't say anything. Exactly. So the best thing for you to do is. This is it. Study aid, um, um, uh, sponsorship money, this and this and this. Just keep it short and simple. Is as is is that way. Just keep it short and simple, and it doesn't need to spend a long time. If you get the calculation right, it doesn't need to spend long time in your account. Mm -hmm. They just need the uh the money to be there in your account. And also the another trick is. If you're going to the embassy to submit your documents on Monday, mm. you need to make proof that the money didn't enter your account maybe yesterday or that mm. day. Mm. And they need to see the inflow of your account because you submit six months. Mm. Six months of so, account. Yeah. So now you have to show that uh this money was has been in my account for some time. Probably sent it to you probably last week. Mm. And when you printed it out, that money it was still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. That's like so. Maybe. But if you have an account statement of like two days ago to give them, nah, it's not advisable. Mm, yeah, of course. I mean, I think it's everywhere now. You can't just wake up and you know manufacture an account or money in your account and you expect to take it to the embassy. So it's it's everywhere. So it's it's a very simple thing. So. If it is your father or your mother that is giving you the money, just if a simple letter, take it to the court to notarize that, oh, this is a gift from my father or my mother giving me this money. And if they don't ask you how you got this money, you don't need to start shooting yourself on the leg. It is just provide a straightforward answer to every question that you are asked at the, at the embassy. So... That is how to show your um your proof of fund. Now, um, then another thing again is this: Do you assist any student to you know? I mean, do you guide any student regarding admission, getting admission, or providing guidance for um uh, for visa application or residence permit application process? Because I'm sure a lot of people would like to get support regarding this, and they don't even mind paying. Do you assist in that area? Uh yes, I do, but um I'll be straightforward with you because um you know people nowadays are very um lazy about mm. things. And yes, even if I'm going to help you, you still have to do a lot of work by yourself. I couldn't I can I'm going to advise you, put you through, tell you what to do, how to get by any probably difficulties, but in the long run, you probably have to figure it out yourself. But if you want me to do everything for you, it comes with your price. So uh, of course. <laughs> so which means if you want some free advice, you see of offer free advice. But if you are the type that uh, you just want to sit down and be taken care of, aha. Uh -huh. So it comes with 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 uh, with a price. So of course I will be I will be dropping is uh, how how can they reach you? How can they reach out to you? I mean which social media platform would you prefer so that I, I, I can drop them on the description of the video? Um, I think my Telegram and uh, my Instagram will be okay. Telegram and Instagram. So um, that is that about our guest. Daniel is currently at uh, um, studying in, in, in 
in um, in Austria, and artificial intelligence is a big deal, man. I really envy him. So, and he has talked about the admission process, the resident permit process, uh, visa application procedure to get or uh, to go to Austria. So that is why I said, oh, come in. If he comes forward today and is able to share his experience, that will really, really help a whole lot of us that are considering um, moving to Austria. And another thing, again, just to ask, is it possible for people to move to Austria with family? Yeah, it's very, 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 very possible. So that means you can move to Austria with your family. But a lot of people don't know this. You can move yeah, to Austria you can with, your with your family. For your, mm -hmm. uh, your proof of funds calculation is now different. Exactly. Mm, so, of course, I mean, they, they, they know this. So... Uh, if if as an individual your proof of fund is 10 m, so if you are going with one child or with a wife, that means your proof of fund should be about 15 m. If you are going with children, just be adding. I mean, for Nigerians, let me say, just be adding extra 5 m for each uh, toddler or each uh, dependent that you are going with to feed. Because I mean, uh, it's it, it the way the, the the way the system works is very different from every other country. But that is how generally all European countries see it. Every dependent, just because of our exchange rate anyway, especially in Nigeria, our exchange rate has mm -hmm. spoiled. I would just advise that for every dependent that you're going with, just budget extra 5M into your proof of fund. So, uh, I mean, that is that for um, this uh, session today. Thank you very much, our host. We really appreciate your presence. And then if you're just yeah. seeing and subscribe to our channel so that by the time we bring opportunities and information like this, you will be the first person to get notification. Till we come your way with another opportunities like this, follow us and you know, like and subscribe. Don't forget to also share this channel with your loved ones. This information that we've passed across today will really, really help a whole lot of people. Let's say hello to, uh, I mean, let's say bye-bye to our guests. Thank you very much, Daniel. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Uh, bye.